Hello everyone. First of all, thank you so much. I'm close to 100 subscribers and that really shows the interest that you guys show. I really appreciate it. And also thank you for the comments and feedback you are giving on social media and a bit everywhere. On this video, I am going to show you how I am reducing the amount of data that I need to send from server to client, which helps me to have more players playing in the same area without it being laggy. So the first thing we are going to take a look at is a simple spell with a visual effect, for example, a fireball. Now the naive approach would be to actually send packets that would update the fireball's movement, so it would be the same in all the clients, but that has its problems. So if a player is lagging and he uses a fireball and then he's somewhere else, the fireball would spawn somewhere else. So the first thing we have to understand is that the fireball will always spawn from the player. Now that we know that, we can actually go a bit beyond that and actually make the fireball data nothing more than who it calls from and to where or to who. You can see here some of the messages that I use for the spells. There's the start, the hit, miss, and the visual. That's the one you're going to use actually now. So the visual effect is nothing more than a caster ID, a target ID, a spell ID, and a speed. That object ID is not important right now. And with this data, we can actually build the simulation of the spell flying around. So it doesn't have to be exactly the same for all the clients, but it has to feel natural. It has to feel good. So you can see that it starts from this uh, dwarf and it ends on the target. So you can see that with just this data, I can build the flying movement from the caster to the target. And for the player, it feels good with lag or without lag. Now let's talk about the NPC movement. Here we can save a lot. Now the naive approach would be to send packets with the position of the NPC over time and the client interpolates over each point. So it would be animated through a series of points. However, if you do this and you have many players in the area, then you'll be sending a lot of data. You'll be using a lot of bandwidth. And uh, napkin math, you can see that it takes a lot of bytes just for a single NPC with only a few players in the area. Let's say a, a player hub, like a capital city. And we can actually have a lot of uh, data reduction here by using a different way. Now if we use a different message that has a vector of points, a speed, and the percentage where on that path the character is, then you can actually rebuild the same path, but you only send the data once, and there's a huge side effect to it, a very positive one. For the client, it will be very smooth regardless of the latency. Now, for the server, there's a huge win here because you can have lots of savings. If we send one packet per NPC movement, even with a few points, then, even with lots of players in the area, you send much less data than in the previous method. Now, we can take a look at the charge, which actually uses the same technique. So, with a charge, it's nothing more than a set of points that the server calculated from the origin where the charge was executed to the destination. So it calculates a set of points, it sends to the client and the client will execute that path. Now on this part, you can see that there is no latency or very little latency in this case. And you can see it's quite smooth. However, if we increase the latency, then things become interesting. Because if you execute the charge and you get the path back from a different place where the player is now, then it would feel awkward if you would teleport the player. So what you have to do here, you have kind of snap it to the charge path. A good way to do it 
you actually have to do a calculation where your character will uh, calculate a path to somewhere in the server path, if that makes sense. So let's say you have the server calculate the path from A to B, and you'll make a point somewhere along the way, let's say a third of the way, and you'll make a new path from where your character is right now to one third of the server path. And then, having that, then you can just snap it from where the player is right now, you charge to the server path, and then you continue from there. And then that allows you to not have the character go through all walls and stuff like that. It will be very awkward behavior. Thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to leave a comment down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.